These are siderophores. They are secreted by bacteria in aerobic environments in order to acquire essential iron. In aerobic environments, iron is oxidized to rust. It is in the iron-3 state, which is insoluble. The insolubility means the iron concentration is lower than what is needed for the life and growth of microorganisms. These structures are one strategy used to circumvent low iron bioavailability and bring this vital metal into the cell. There are hundreds of different siderophores, but the most common of these fall into one of three groups, hydroxamates, catecholates, and carboxylates. In this depiction, the functional groups that characterize each kind of siderophore are emphasized in gray, red, and blue. The teal highlights the R groups, which vary between specific siderophores. These are the individual functional groups that are found in each of the three siderophore groups. Each of these functional groups donate two oxygen atoms, which are in most cases negatively charged. This is not a steadfast rule, as some alternatives can occur where other atoms like nitrogen or sulfur take the place of an oxygen. These alternative functional groups have decreased iron affinity. The functional groups act as bidentate ligands, but naturally occurring siderophores typically combine three of these into a hexadentate structure through the variable R groups. Iron binding to hexadentate ligands is entropically favorable due to the chelate effect. Iron-3 is usually found in an aqueous solution, meaning it's naturally hexa-coordinated with water. To bind the iron, siderophores surround this complex in a hexadentate manner. The new iron-3 siderophore complex has an octahedral geometry with a high-spin D5 electron configuration. Here you can see which siderophore atoms are donated to iron. They're nearly all oxygen atoms, and most of them are negatively charged. The donation of these oxygen atoms means these ligands are sigma and pi donors, meaning siderophores are weak field ligands and would favor a decreased d-orbital octahedral splitting and a high-spin electron configuration. The combination of the complex's geometry and the metal center's high-spin electron configuration results in zero ligand field stabilization energy. Without bound iron, siderophores are not rigid compounds. The bond to iron is what stabilizes their structure. Before the iron-3 siderophore bond forms, you can see the hydrogens found on each siderophore. In low pH climates, solvated hydrogens compete strongly with iron-3 for these oxygen donor groups. Thus, these complexes are more stable at a higher pH. The complex's stability is a result of ligand denticity, as well as interactions between hard acids and bases. Iron-3 is a hard acid, and the siderophore donor oxygens are hard bases. In this way, the metal and the ligand can interact. Hexadentate siderophores have three times as much donor oxygen density than bidentate siderophores, meaning the former have a much higher affinity for iron as well as a tighter bond to the metal. Once the iron-3 siderophore complex has formed, it is introduced into cells by complex, energy-dependent mechanisms. These processes typically begin with receptor proteins in the cell membrane. Here are some membrane-bound receptor proteins that are able to carry out this function. Each protein has a high affinity for a certain type of siderophore and will therefore bind to that kind. Not only do siderophores bind to a specific protein, they also bind to a specific location on that protein. The binding location selectivity of the iron siderophore complex means that the membrane proteins have high specificity for the complex. The specific binding locations are exemplified in the green pockets of the protein surfaces. Once the siderophore binds, the protein undergoes conformational changes 
that further tailor these binding pockets to the complex. The complex is shuttled through the membrane-bound proteins into the periplasm. Here it binds to another high-affinity protein and is then taken directly or passed through a chain of transport proteins until it reaches its final destination.